Hi everyone, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Now today, we're joined with the 2019 Audi A1. Um, now this video is actually really very exciting for me because as some of you might know who have tuned into the channel for quite a while, I used to own the previous generation Audi A1. It was my first car, I had it for two and a half years and I absolutely loved it. However, back in the summer, I did end up getting rid of it, um, knowing that there was going to be um, a new A1, a facelifted one. And now that we're starting to see them out on the roads, I can finally give my opinions on it. And actually, this is the first time I've seen one up close, and it's also gonna be the first time that I get behind the wheel. Now, it's a huge thank you to Southampton Audi for kindly providing me the car for today. Uh, but yeah, here we go. The new A1. As I'm sure you've already noticed, the new A1 is drastically different to the previous one. Looks wise, I think it's a lot more aggressive. We've got these extra air intakes just below the bonnet, which I think really give it a kind of A1 Quattro kind of feel. Uh, we've also got this nice aggressive grille, and actually I think the styling hues of this car are very sharp. The lines, both exterior and interior, are very sharp. I mean, just have a look at this side sill, for example. To be honest, it almost looks like it's actually a bit damaged, but it's the little details like that which really make this actually quite an aggressive little car. This one is fitted with a 17 inch uh, split five spoke wheels, which actually look really, really nice. I've seen photos of what I believe to be the standard wheels on the A1 and it really doesn't do it for me, but these wheels I'm actually a big fan of. I expect they'll look really good in diamond cut form or maybe even gloss black. Um, but actually going back to the uh, front end quickly, just have a look at some of these angles. It's just, it's very aggressive. It almost looks like an S1, or it almost should be. I mean, it's actually really interesting to see what they're gonna do for an S1, and maybe even an, an RS1 variant of this car. But actually, if I head around to the back quickly and show you some more angles, uh, have a look at these rear lights, for example. I mean, the edges are just so sharp, and it, it really does give an aggressive vibe, especially down here towards the rear end, down by the rear splitter. And like I mentioned, this is, effectively the standard model. It's the 30 TFSI, uh, which is basically a one liter twin turbocharged four cylinder, which produces 116 brake horsepower. Um, now effectively on paper, it shouldn't be very quick, um, but the A1, as I've known uh, previously owning one, they're very light cars. And so they are so nimble and really fun uh, to drive. And I'm actually really excited to find that out for myself later. Um, but yeah, exterior wise, it's drastically different. It's slightly longer. Uh, so so you get a bit more space inside, especially in the back seats. I know that was an issue when I had mine, uh, so it just makes it a bit more usable. But yeah, talking about the interior, let's head on inside and take a look. Okay, inside the new A1. Now, instantly, as soon as I get in here, I see that virtual cockpit. I love how basically all the A1s, all the new A1s that will roll out, no matter how spec they are, will have that virtual cockpit. And obviously now, me being a Golf R owner, I am obsessed with the virtual cockpit and I love how um, that is becoming more popular in more new cars. Again, it's very, very angular in here. I mean, these door handles, uh, even small things like that, the gear knob, it's, it's not your standard gear knob. It's very strange, it's very angular, it's very nice. It feels nice in your hand. Uh, this one actually has the six-speed man. You can either have that or the seven-speed uh, S-Tronic, I think is the Audi way of saying it. Uh, but we will see how that performs later on. Um, even though this is a, a standard model somewhat, I mean, it, it is an S-Line, um, it is, it is very nice in here. I mean, we've got this nice S-line steering wheel with some funky patterns on it. Um, not flat bottoms, but I wouldn't expect that anyway. We've got the upgraded um, multimedia interface, which is angled towards you. I like that. So it's very driver focused. You've got the virtual cockpit and that. Um, I don't know about having a play around with that. It's very responsive, uh, very easy to use. As well as that, we have a normal handbrake. Um, now, one thing I don't like about how technology is evolving these days is those silly e-brake things. You've got the little switch or a button. I mean, I've got it in my car. Um, and it's nice to see a new car roll out of a factory still with that nice traditional handbrake. I like how they've carried that on from the uh, previous generation. Obviously, it's still been updated. And actually, it is, it is, it's an angular, it's an angular handbrake is what it is. But I like how, how shapey everything is. You can tell it's very, it's been designed very cleverly. Um, but there are a few little panels in here which really do kind of let the side down. Very scratchy plastics on the door card and also here 
uh, in the centre console. But that 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 is it really. Other than that, it's a very it's a very nice place to be. Uh, but seeing as this is a standard model, I presume that this does disappear once you uh, spec it up a little higher. Um, but yeah, the interior is very nice. Uh, a couple of other little things which I find a little bit strange um, is where the um, multimedia kind of volume switches. Say if you're in uh, either first, third or fifth, it's kind of a bit of a, a stretch to get round. Uh, maybe it would be a bit better if it was up here um, with all the other dials. But These seats are nice as well. Obviously, we've got the S-Line uh, logo here, half leather, half cloth. Um, but it, it just looks very premium, um, minus those other scratchy plastic panels. Um, but yeah, first impressions, just having a look around this thing. Uh, I'm a fan. I'm a big, big fan. <laughs> Okay, so quickly before we get out onto the road uh, and see what this thing is like to drive, I just want to compare one quick thing uh, very quickly. This here is the key to this A1. Sorry, my hands are cold. I'm nearly dropping the key. Uh, so that is the key for this car. This here is the key to my Golf R. They're identical keys. Um, I mean, it's not a bad thing. I, I, I don't mind them. Um, just a very strange discovery. But anyway, let's get this thing fired up. Virtual cockpit is up into life. Oh, sat nav's on. Sat nav, that's the radio, mate. Right, okay. Into first. Instantly, that is a very uh, easy gearbox to manoeuvre. Same with the clutch. Very, very light. Obviously, these things are ideal city cars. Um, okay, right. Virtual cockpit is very clear, very HD. Same with the multimedia system. Um, and interesting, one thing I noticed and actually really enjoyed about my car, my A1, uh, the previous generation to this, was just how nimble it is. And this is exactly the same, excuse my camera shaking around in the back. Um, the turning speeds and kind of agility is very, very good. Obviously, you'd expect that from a small car. Um, but yeah, very, very sharp. I can imagine the S1 or maybe even RS1 variant of this being really, really quite fun to drive. But yeah, initial first impressions are it's very, very easy to drive. Clutch is nice and simple, steering's light. The, the, actually, that's an interesting point. The, the ride, okay, so this is an S-Line model. Um, and the ride is not the best, but you'd expect that from the S-Line model because it's slightly uh, more sporty. Um, now I had the S-Line, in fact I had an S-Line style edition um, and it did have a hard ride, but uh, I wasn't bothered. Um, so that is something to note. Um, this does have the S-Line or sporty suspension. Um, you do feel the bumps, but it's, it's, not, it's not horrific. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is nice, very nice. <laughs> Now, like I mentioned before, this thing is powered by a one litre, a tiny little one litre engine, uh, which is kind of being supported, dragged along by uh, a turbocharger. Um, but even though it is a small engine, it still kicks out 116 brake horsepower. If I just drop it down, it's a third now, 50, 55, 60. It's definitely not short of power. And actually, it kind of feels a little bit nippier than, than my car, which is a 1.4 pushing 122 brake. Um, yeah, so they've done wonders with that. Obviously, it's a smaller engine, so I'd imagine uh, the fuel economy is actually really rather good. Uh, and actually, one thing I noticed whilst researching this car is they don't offer a diesel. So obviously, you're not going to get amazing fuel consumption because obviously that is where you go uh, if you want a diesel. Um, actually, let's just have a flick through here. Let's see, so our consumption at the moment is 35.3. Um, which actually isn't too bad at all. I mean, I haven't been driving it hard, but I haven't been driving it slow. Um, but yeah, obviously this is pretty much built to be one of the ultimate city cars. And so having a some fuel economy like that really isn't too bad at all. So I've actually got to do a little bit of a maneuver now. Um, and so it's probably an ideal time to talk about kind of visibility. Now, obviously you've got your standard visibility from your three mirrors, but there is a really rather large A pillar towards the back. And that is the same with the previous generation, the one that I had. Uh, that is probably your only major blind spot, but then again, you do have it covered through the side mirrors. But these A pillars aren't too bad. And to be honest, the visibility all round is actually pretty decent. So the main point which I was actually asking myself about before filming this video is how does it compare to the previous generation, the one that I had? 
that. Now, obviously, it's it's been modernised up to 11. I mean, it's it's a mile ahead uh, technology-wise than my car. You had a small flip-up screen in the middle of the dash, uh, and you kind of controlled it with some little buttons. It wasn't touchscreen, whereas this, we've got the SatNav Pro, the 8.8-inch, I believe it is, uh, very high definition and very easy to use, like what I touched on earlier. You've got that virtual cockpit, which, again, just makes the driving experience so much better because it's all... It's just cool, you know, you don't have those analog gauges which are kind of, let's be honest, getting a little bit out of date now. And it's just really nice. You can change the drive mode. So we go, we're in efficiency at the moment. We've got auto, dynamic, and then individual. Individual being that you can pretty much customize it to however you want. Obviously, like I mentioned as well, this car is slightly longer, only by a couple of inches, but that does really make wonders in the old rear seats department because that was one big complaint which I got um, from family members having to squeeze in there. Of course, I was just laughing because I found it funny and I was I was all right here in the driver's seat, but the, um, the rear seats now have a lot more room. And now I think actually the roof kind of continues back a bit more, so you're not restricted with headroom either. As for the looks, I love them. It's so much more sharp, and even though this is kind of almost the base model car, it still looks sporty and it doesn't lose any of that kind of aggression. We've got those lovely air vents across the front. We've got sharp lines here, there and everywhere, especially in the headlights and the bumpers. And even inside, we've got the door handles here, we've got the gear stick and just everything about the interior. In fact, everything about the whole car is very angular. I know I've said that quite a lot, but I've been actually quite surprised just how, how shapey it is. Um, and, I, and I like that, I really do like that. As for speed, well, it's not rapid, but it really isn't slow. I mean, that was 60 just there. It revs up to just over 6,000 RPM, but you don't buy this car for, for RPM. Oh, my car revs up to 6,000. Uh, you buy it for, I don't know what you buy it for, to be honest with you. It's not an S1, so it's technically not a sporty car, but then again, it is. And the field that it's sat in, i.e. kind of the, not hot hatch, but kind of, no, city cars, small usable cars, it really does excel in. And I've been actually very surprised how much different and how much better it feels than the previous generation. So there we go then, the 2019 Audi A1. So, what do I think of it? Um, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys here. I was not expecting how different this was going to be. I mean, we've got new bumpers, we've got new technology, we've got new engine sizes. It's miles different to the uh, previous generation car. And now, let's not forget that that previous generation car started production in 2010. They only stopped making them last year, so they were being built for a solid eight years. Um, now, even though in that generation we did have a couple of facelifts, it was in desperate need of a good old spruce up. And this is definitely a worthy successor. I am, I am actually a big fan of this car. Obviously, I was a big fan of the last car because I owned it. I owned one for two and a half years. Um, and yeah, I think that it really does tick all the boxes. Um, there are a few little downsides, I'd say. One of them being those interior panels, but really, this is one of those cars which I genuinely struggle to find some negatives with. Um, I think that anyone watching this video who is kind of considering buying one, go and test drive one. Uh, this is actually one of the demos that Southampton Audi have. Um, so if you're in the area, this is probably the car that you'd be test driving. Um, but yeah, go and test drive one, see what you think of it, but it's cool. It's a really, really cool car. Now, obviously this is just a first drive, uh, first impressions kind of video. This is not a full on in-depth review. And uh, the reason behind that is there's already loads online uh, of this car. Um, and I thought that because this car, the A1 has quite a close connection to me, obviously, because I'm a previous owner of one, I thought that I'd just get behind the wheel of one and really share with you guys what I think about it. And you can tell by the smile on my face just how much I enjoyed it. It is a little go-kart and I'm glad that it hasn't lost that characteristic from the previous generation. They really are fun cars to drive. I mean, let's not forget that there's a tiny one litre engine in here. I mean, it probably only covers about that much, but yet you can still have fun. We've got a little turbocharger uh, fitted to it as well, um, but it really does go like stink. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm waffling on. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, then please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.